Hello everyone, welcome to Max9 tutorial number 19, recording to and playing from buffers. Well, whoops, there we go, there we go, new uh, window open here, I've actually already saved mine. I want to uh, talk to you about buffers, as, <clears throat> as the uh, title suggests. When we are doing uh, sampling and recording on a computer, we need a chunk of memory. And that's what a buffer is. It's really a chunk of memory that you're more or less going to put a fence around somewhere and say, this is my chunk of memory for storing this particular sound that I'm going to record into there. So let's get right to it. Type the letter N and then type buffer and then you see right in here there's a buffer it stores audio samples we knew that it also has a tilde as anything that is uh, related to um, audio forms often does in Mac so we go ahead we click that we click here and we hit the space bar buffers need a name because it's sort of like writing your name on the deed of that property that now you've put the fence around, right? Right. So we can call our buffer by name and I am going to, and make it a name you can remember, but let's just start right now because we're gonna go down a, a, a terrible alley here. If you name your buffer the same as my buffer, then um, nothing's going to work out. So mine is going to be called not your buffer, just to remind you that this is my buffer. Okay, so far, names out of the way. By the way, the name cannot have spaces in it. Okay, the next thing here is a file name. Now, if we put a file name here, this would this buffer would automatically go to that file if it's in the max search path and it would open it and load that audio file into the buffer but that is not what we're using a buffer for today so we're going to skip that and go directly to duration the duration is the number of milliseconds that this sampled piece of audio is going to last it is telling you how big your little uh, piece of property is that you're fencing in. So let's um, go ahead and start with 2,000, 2,000 milliseconds, enough time to count to two, probably. Now let's see, and then we'll hit the space bar again, and then number of channels, we like stereo, why not? So we'll put two. Our buffer is complete. This buffer will now store um, whatever sound we put into it. And how might we put that sound into it? Well, there's lots of different ways to do it, but weirdly enough, we don't connect anything to it. We just take our buffer and stick it over here. Because what we use to fill in a buffer is another object. I know, you're all scratching your heads here. Type N for a new object and type record we're going to record and there you see it record tilde record sound into a buffer perfect perfect so go up here hit the space bar and then we know what to do buffer name not your buffer and then the number of input channels I guess we would like to have two. There we go. Our record object is done. So what's going to happen? We're going to record into here. This is like a little um, uh, recording device, amplifier thing. It's not really an amplifier, but it's something that records to a file-ish thing. And this is our place where we're going to record to. So what do we need now? We need a microphone and um, type N again and type um, 
oh, what is it? EZ. Um, and luckily it comes up. EZ doesn't stand for anything except EZ. And ADC, audio input on and off button, uh, audio digital uh, oh, conversion, audio digital convert, analog digital converter, that's it. Sound wave to digital wave file converter, easy ADC. So we're going to put the easy ADC there, no arguments, just go over here and click, and then you see the microphone pop up. Um, let's just cheat a little bit here and uh, option click on that microphone because, <clears throat> you know, help files always have better looking stuff than we do. So here's our little microphone and it has, look, it has little um, sound meters on it. Well, that would be nice. Um, let's unlock this, steal that. Look, it even labels the the channels. How, could it be any better? Um, we'll go ahead and copy that. Close our help file. Delete this one. We don't need you. Paste the other one. We need you. And then now we have channel one. We have channel two. We have these nice meters here. I'm just kind of moving them out of the way because I have a plan here. We also need to be able to regulate the sound coming in, especially when you have a booming voice like mine. Um, you don't want to be just blowing things apart. So we are going to use, oh my God, a new key here. Type the letter L. That is for live, and it already came up, a live gain. Live are objects that are used with Ableton Live, but they also work with Max. Max and Ableton Live work well together. In fact, they're owned by the same company. So live gain. And um, and then we just click outside it. There we get the live gain uh, suitable for Ableton. We can move it up a little closer even if we want to. I'm going to make it wider so that we can see the see the buttons more easily here. But we connect the audio in channel one to audio in on the live gain, audio in channel two. Did I just say channel two? I'm sorry if I did. Um, and then we connect that to channel two. Now we have to be careful down here because this is uh, channel one again, and that goes over here to channel one. And then this one, the next, not over here. No, don't go over there. That's something else. Um, the next one over is channel two, and that goes into channel two on the record. Fantastic. So now we lock our patchers and we click on the microphone to turn the audio on. The audio is not on. Now the audio is on, and you can see my big voice just booming away. Turn that down. Yep, we can turn it down. We can turn it up. That looks okay. Usually if your voice is coming up, you know, between about two thirds and about this little line here, you're doing good. You've got good signal. So, um, oh, right. We need one more thing. This record thing is down here. Here's the sound coming in, but we have to tell it to actually record into the buffer. To do that, we have to, I think, just put a toggle on it. Let's just try it out. I believe this to be the case. Or we could hover over this and get some information. Um, record channel one. One starts, zero stops. We also know that the output of a toggle is going to be a one or a zero. Output one or zero, right. So there we go. The toggle's going to work. The whole thing's ready to fly. Are we ready to count to two? I'm actually going to count to five once I turn this on. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Easy enough. 
Now let's go over here to our buffer, still with your patcher locked, and just double click on it. And this window popped up way over here. I'll drag it back here so we can look at it. And this is um, a graphic representation of what the buffer is recorded. So it's recording in stereo. And I'm going to guess this is the sound of the clicking toggle. And this is probably one and this is probably two. And then the other things just got left off over here. We'll be able to um, verify this shortly, but I'm just telling you what we're looking at. So there we go. I'm going to close that again. It doesn't um, update in real time. You have to close it and open it, I think. We'll check that too. Okay, so now what we want to do is come down here and click, type the letter N, and what is going to play that sound? Let's just try typing play. Look at that. There it is with its little tilde. We can go up and click right there next to it, hit the space bar, and now this thing says, hey, I need some arguments. What's the first one? Have you guessed yet? A buffer name. Why? Because the play object needs to play something. It's going to go out and look. Here you have the fenced-in computer memory land that you just made. 2,000 milliseconds long. Called? Well, not your buffer. Okay, so these have to match exactly. And then hit the space again. Number of output channels. Let's go for two. There we go. All right, so there we go. We've recorded it. It's stored. Now we're going to play it. I guess we need one of these toggles. Option click on it. Uh, for some reason, I think that's faster than just typing letter T. Force of habit. Sorry. I just do that. And then we sort of need to duplicate what's going on here. Like we would like to have another volume control down here just in case it's really, really loud. So I'm going to option click on, whoops, didn't mean to do that. I'm going to option drag on this and put it down here and hook it thusly from channel one to, whoops, from channel one to channel one, and there's output channel two. I always like to just hover a little bit and make sure to verify, because sometimes, I don't know what's going on with that clicking there, sometimes it just doesn't, uh, you know, it'll turn out to be this one, or what, what, just better to feel that reinforcement. And then we have a microphone up here, so what do we get down here? We get a speaker. So we'll type N, easy, because we like it easy. And instead of the audio input, we're going to get the audio output, the digital to audio converter. Audio to digital, digital to audio. See what I'm saying? It all makes sense somehow. Okay, so there's our... Did I just click the wrong thing? Goodness me. Okay, here we go again. N. E Z. DAC. There we go. Okay, there's our speaker. And we connect the output. Channel 1 to the input on the speaker. We get output channel 2. Make sure it's just the next one over. And that goes right over here. And we lock our patcher. We turn this off. We turn it back on um, just to make sure everything's functioning. And uh, I'm going to turn this down a little bit just in case I'm uh, booming out of control. But let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and start it. One, two. One, two. I'm going to turn it up a little bit and let's see how that goes. Oops, I never turned it off. One, two. Yep. One, two. Great. Thank you. Um, so, um, if, so, 
you see, it is important that we know how big our buffer is going to be for what we want to do. So in this case, let's say we wanted a longer sampling. I'm going to unlock my patcher here. We could come over to whatever your buffer's name is and change this to, let's just say, uh, 6,000. And now it's six seconds long. Now I should note that if you actually type inside of an object, it makes it a completely new object. So when I double click on this, you'll see there is nothing in there because it's like, nope, I'm a whole new object. I'm not your buffer. <laughs> so um, then we can record again. Um, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, etc. Okay, and then let's see what we got. Um, <laughs> of course, I, I sort of sung them together, but um, wow, I think I managed to do it in under six seconds. We only got up to the, I don't know if you can see this, that says 4,000 milliseconds there. So I actually stopped. Huh. So it means they can actually... Uh, it'll get my whatever in here. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Hmm. Or maybe I just hit the off button. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, you get the idea. Here, we'll, we'll record uh, counting one second at a time and try to re remain scientific here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There. Now we'll look at the, okay, click one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to guess. We'll play it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so it doesn't get the nine or the ten. Anyway, that, not that it's important that it does. My point really is you change the buffer to the size you want, and that's the to, to make it fit what you're working on. You don't want it to be too big, or you're going to be uh, stealing lots of memory space from your computer. You don't want it to be too small, or your samples won't be very long. That is it for me. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, he recorded. Okay, everybody, thank you for watching, and... I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Six, seven, eight. <laughs> well, that was embarrassing. Well, that was embarrassing. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Six, seven, eight. See, it's all a learning experience. Okay, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.